All right, good afternoon, everybody. I wish that I could be there, but tragically, I am at another meeting. But trust me, I would much rather be there with you. So please be very nice to Ms. Benson. And today, I am going to be talking about Latin American diplomacy. And you are going to be following along on note sheet that she has given you, okay? Feel free at any point in time to pause or stop and start this YouTube video since I'm not there and I have no idea how fast or slow you're writing. So here we go. All right. Uh, the first thing you need to know is what is Latin America? Uh, Latin America, for those of you who are unfamiliar, although I think a good amount of our classmates are familiar thanks to the uh, heritage project that we did, Latin America is this section of the world. Um, it is all of these countries that are located in Central. This is Central right here. Remember, Mexico is actually in North America. Uh, Central and South America, this bad boy, and then all of these islands. And really the key defining feature of it being Latin America is that most of these countries, all of these countries actually, all of these countries uh, use Spanish or Portuguese as their major language. Now, if you remember, we pretty much dominated the Spanish-American War, and after that, we are regarded as a world power. So if we look at this, what I'd actually like for everybody to do, uh, Ms. Benson, you're probably going to want to pause this, is I want everybody in their table groups take 30 seconds, and I want you to come up with the meaning of this political cartoon right here. Go ahead and pause me and then give them time and then share as a class and see if you can figure it out. I'm going to immediately reveal the answer, so definitely pause this. Okay, great. Um, so if you'll notice, hopefully somebody said this, uh, the eagle represents America. And if you'll notice, we've got the stars and the shining of the sun. It's also meant to represent an American flag. And if you'll notice, it says 10,000 miles from tip to tip. So everything that the eagle's wings touch, and the eagle is supposed to be symbolic of the American spirit or the American military, we own. And I don't know if you can see it, but it says Manila, which is part of the Philippines, um, Samoa, you've got Puerto Rico. So this is meant to represent how large the American empire has become. Here's another political cartoon. Pause me, take 30 seconds right now, and see if you can come up with the meaning. Okay, so the meaning. Hopefully somebody got this. But notice, this is meant to represent America, but look at what he's wearing. We've talked about this before. Whenever you see somebody in the red and white stripes, that's Uncle Sam. So you've got Uncle Sam, and notice we're a child right at the very beginning of our country, and over time we grow, but notice we don't just grow and get older we get a little large and in charge. And so it's trying to say that we're kind of over outgrowing our britches. We're getting a little bit bigger than we're meant to. So how we shouldn't be doing this. This is actually an anti-expansionist cartoon because look at the bad effects of growing too big. You become very girthy gentlemen. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, so 1901, Teddy Roosevelt becomes president. Uh, he is just, well, three years or just out of his role of leading the Rough Riders. Everybody loves him. He's everybody's favorite person. Uh, and he is very strict. He's a hard liner. And he wants to remain in control as much as the U.S. is in control of Latin America. The big idea is he wants to make sure that European countries are not allowed to colonize Latin America. Excuse me, they should not be allowed to come over because if a European country makes a colony right here, who do they have easy access to? So we want them out. And if you remember back to sixth grade, you learned about the Monroe Doctrine, which said that European countries are no longer allowed to colonize Latin America. They have to stay out of the Western Hemisphere. But if you actually think about it, we never say what happens if they don't. There's no specific threat in the Monroe Doctrine of what happens if the European countries don't stay out. And Roosevelt agrees with the Monroe Doctrine. He feels like we should have it, but he wants it to be more specific. So what he adds is something called a corollary. Think of it as a PS note. Um, so if you're writing an email or a letter and you add PS at the bottom, 
your original email is still the same, you've just added a little note. And that's exactly what the Roosevelt Corollary is. So what he did was he kept the Monroe Doctrine, but he added a PS note. And the PS note, called the Roosevelt Corollary, says, Europe, you still have to stay out. However, if you don't stay out, we will use our military to kick you out. And, and this is the really important part, we as the United States give ourselves the right to get involved in Latin American countries if they seem unstable or need our protection. So for whatever reason, the United States has decided that your country in Latin America or South America or Central America is in threat of collapsing or if it needs our help, whether you ask for it, we will give it to you. Now, this is where it gets tricky. So, <clears throat> what they do is they kind of come up with a nickname for the Roosevelt Corollary and they call it the Big Stick Diplomacy. And the reason they call it that is Roosevelt's famous quote was that if you speak softly but carry a big stick, you will go far. Meaning that if you have a really big military, you don't have to yell for people to hear you. You can say what you want to calmly and people will see the military behind you and listen to you and obey you. So that's why he adds that little bit of come into the Latin American countries and we will use the military to kick you out. It's to make Europe take it seriously. Now, <clears throat> uh, Roosevelt uses this big stick diplomacy immediately. So one of the things that he does is Dominican Republic goes bankrupt and they go bankrupt because they are so in debt to different European countries. And rather than European countries coming over and taking control of the Dominican Republic, the United States says to keep Europe out, we will pay back their bills. However, we will also take over them, take them over. Uh, go ahead, 30 seconds in your group, talk about the meaning of this political cartoon and see if you can find the symbols. And pause me, please pause me. Okay, so you're back, hopefully. Um, all right, so hopefully everybody recognized that this strapping gentleman is Teddy Roosevelt, and this is meant to be a European ruler who is trying to use his bankruptcy claims as a way to take over the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic called itself Republic of Santo Domingo, hence why this doesn't say Dominican Republic. Um, and instead, the U.S. is using our military to force Europe to stop, to kick them out. So that's an example of the big stick diplomacy. And if you look in the back, there's our Navy. So it's not just one little gun. We've got the whole Navy behind him. He's speaking softly and carrying a big stick. Uh, now, um, okay, so let's talk about Cuba. Um, so we basically in 1906 have to go into Cuba again to stop them from having another revolution. Yes, they already had one, uh, but they're having another revolution. So we use the big stick diplomacy to invade Cuba. I'm not gonna go too much into detail with that. And this is the big one. We then use it to build the Panama Canal. If you've never heard of the country of Panama, is there a better map coming up? No, there is not. Give me two seconds, I'm scrolling. Um, here we go. Okay, so this, little teeny tiny skinny country is Panama. Panama is a country with lots of lakes and rivers and prior to the Panama Canal being built if you were a ship that was taking off in the Atlantic and you needed to get to Asia what you had to do was you had to sail all the way around South America all the way down here which is a very dangerous territory and then up through the Pacific Ocean to get to Asia which would be over here. Now, wouldn't life be a million times easier if you could just cut through the Panama area and then go over to the Pacific? Which is exactly what the Panama Canal does. What we do, two seconds. Okay, what we do is we use our big stick diplomacy to take over Panama's little section so that we could build the Panama Canal. Now, Panama during this time period is a territory of Colombia. So we try to work with Colombia. We say to Colombia, hey, we will give you $10 million for a 99 year lease. Colombia declines. So we say, okay, we will work around you. So then what we do 
is we go to Panama and we say, hey, we will help you revolt from Colombia and get you your independence if in exchange you let us use this part of Panama and build the Panama Canal. Panama says, heck yes, and that's exactly what we do. We get Panama free from Colombia and then we build the Panama Canal, which is a shortcut between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. Uh, 30 seconds. Go for this cartoon. Pause me. Okay, you're back. Uh, now, what you've got right here, again, Uncle Sam, and he's lecturing, if you'll look, and they've, got, he's, they've drawn them as little boys, he's lecturing the, the South American countries to follow his lead. And the teddy bear is obviously symbolic of Teddy Roosevelt. And that is the end of this. Okay, so what I want you to do is I would like you to work in your groups and I want everybody to make sure that you have completely filled out the notes and you've done it correctly. In a minute, we'll probably give you guys a couple of minutes depending on how well you're working and how much you missed. In a minute, Miss Benson is gonna go over the key. And so you're going to be very nice and kind and you're gonna raise your hands and share answers uh, and go through the key and make sure you got the right notes. When I come back, I will give you more information on the Panama Canal. I've got some good videos that I wanted to show you. It's just, I'm not there, so I can't do it. Uh, so take their time with this, go over the answers, make sure you've got your note sheet, and then at the end of class, if there's time, I would really like for everybody to share their yellow journalism headlines. You know where those are. So you'll go through each headline one at a time, okay? All right, guys, have a good day. Be good.